also our well-known friend Atisha Stalk is to face a new charge, that being solicitation to escape, escape from El Paso County Jail, believe it or not. Now we have the affidavit of probable cause, which has been written and signed. It was signed the 1st of June by the affiant, who is Deputy Catherine Draper from the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. So what I'm going to do, I'll read through the affidavit for you and it's just typical T. It's T down to a T. So, as I say, this is dated 1st of June. It was written and signed just a few days ago. Defendant name, Letitia Leanne Stout, date of birth, 8th of April 1983. The following affidavit is submitted to the court will be the El Paso County Court to document the probable cause and the support of the arrest. Well, she's already in jail anyway, so on 18th of May 2020, approximately 1900 hours, your affiant, Deputy Catherine Draper, sworn deputy with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, hereafter referred to as one, or sorry, I was assigned as the primary deputy in Ward Alpha 2 in the El Paso County Jail, which is located as 2739 East Las Vegas Street. Title of the charge, as I say, solicitation to commit escape. This is a felony filing case. On 18th of May, approximately 1900 hours, I, Deputy Catherine Draper, a sworn deputy with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, was assigned as the primary deputy in Ward Alpha 2 in the El Paso County Jail, located as 2739 East Las Vegas Street, County of El Paso, Colorado. At approximately 1900 hours, Ms. Teresa Borchard date of birth 25th June 1979 asked to speak with me. Ms. Borchard is an inmate at the El Paso County Jail. Ms. Borchard said she has received a couple of letters from Ms. Letitia Stalk. Ms. Stalk is an inmate at the El Paso County Jail. Ms. Borchard stated the letters she received from Ms. Stalk contain written plans for Ms. Stalk's escape. I asked where these letters were, and Miss Ms. Borchard told me they were in her cell. Ms. Borchard told me that when Ms. Stalk has her hour out, she stops by Ms. Borchard's cell, cell number four, and talks with her. Ms. Borchard also explained to me that Ms. Stalk, I'm going to call her T from now on, that T will pass notes to her and other inmates by sliding the notes under their doors or through the door jam. Ms. Borchard told me this is how she received these notes from T. Was by T sliding them through her door jam. Ms. Borchard explained to me that she is in lower level, lower bunk restricted and does not go upstairs where T is housed in cell number 10. On the 5th of May 2020, T was housed in Alpha 2. T is classified as segregation from all, shortened to seg all, meaning she will not be moved around this facility with other inmates. T is not to be housed with anyone else and she will not have out time with anyone else. T is also classified as a full restraint escape risk, meaning she will not be transported outside of this facility without full restraints being placed on her wrists and ankles and her wrists will be secured to a belt around her waist. At approximately 1900 hours I went into Ms. Borchard's cell and interviewed her. 
This is where Ms. Borchard gave me both letters that she had received from T. Ms. Borchard told me that T has been talking a lot lately to the other inmates in the ward. Ms. Borchard said that T told her she has been making plans to escape and was looking for Ms. Borchard's help. Ms. Borchard told me that she had not read one of the letters written by T because Ms. Borchard had been in court all afternoon. Ms. Borchard told me she received the letter before she went to court when T was on her hour out. During the interview, Ms. Borchard stated T said she was planning on breaking out her cell window and measured herself. T said that she will fit through the window. I asked Ms. Borchard why T would choose her to help T escape. Ms. Borchard said it was because she was Italian and kind of the bad boy. Ms. Borchard stated T thought if she offered Ms. Borchard money, she would help her escape. I asked Ms. Borchard if she was going to give T any help. She said, no way. That is why I told you about the letters to begin with. Ms. Borchard said she knows about T's charges and she doesn't want to be involved or have anything to do with her. Ms. Borchard said she, if she did anything, it would be to use her for commissary. 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 Commissary items are food or hygiene products that inmates can purchase. In the Alpha 2 ward, the inmates are only allowed to purchase and have correspondence, material and personal hygiene. I asked Ms. Borchard if she was planning on helping T escape. Ms. Borchard said no, that she is looking at her own time now and wouldn't do something stupid like that to make her own situation worse. Ms. Borchard told me her and T had a conversation the morning of May 18, 2020, and T spoke about using the broom handle to bust out the window in her cell. Ms. Borchard said that T told her she would fit through the window because she had already measured herself. I received two letters from Ms. Borchard she claimed were from T. Both letters had similar handwriting. In the first letter I opened, it was written that the writer's G-par, G-PA, G-par, was putting $75,000 in an account for a private attorney. It was written that the account was opened for the author's daughter to use as well. The author wrote to Ms. Borchard saying that she would, and I quote, much rather use the money to survive, if you know what I mean. In the letter was written, you have my word to make sure we are missing in action. I got us covered. The letter written stated they, I quote, just need to set up some access points. The letter written said that once her and Ms. Borchard get access to the state bank and funds, they will be good. It was added in the letter that the letter was written partially in code because her letters could get opened. It was written in the letter about a visit she was having tonight at 8pm. T did have a professional visit at 20 hundred hours on May 18th with a social worker for an hour and a half. This shows that T is the author of this letter. In a second letter, the author wrote she had been looking for days at her window. The author stated she had already measured and drew something that resembled the window in her cell. This drawing can be found at the bottom of this letter that she wrote. The letter stated that it's perfect next to the window that was drawn. The author wrote in the letter asking Ms. Borchard to check the broom piece since Ms. Borchard gets to use that item on her time out. The author added in the letter that she was dead serious and asked Ms. Borchard to just think hard. This letter has similar handwriting to the first letter that spoke about T's professional visit she had in the ward. At the bottom of the letter, the author asked Ms. Borchard to I quote, throw the note away in the toilet. 
and approximately 2300 hours deputy at Jennifer Jago and I went into T cell I told T to put her shoes on because she was being moved during this interaction I did not ask T any questions T was placed in full restraints and escorted to a cell in the medical section once T was removed from the cell Deputy Jago and I were the only people inside of her cell. No other inmates have access in T cell. T comes out by herself for her hour out. During a shakedown of T cell, I found another letter addressed to Sweetie. This letter had similar handwriting to the first two letters that I had received from Ms. Borchard. In this letter, the author makes the comment that, I quote, if something comes up on the news like she is no longer in the jail or is missing to not be afraid on the back of one of the pages was the name Harley which is the name of T's daughter T has her daughter named as her next of kin in her booking information the author wrote for this person to just keep normal and focused underlining these comments she wrote for this person to trust her on this and underlined it. At approximately 0010 hours on May 19th, 2020, I placed three letters are recovered in evidence locker number 71 and locked with a master padlock. This was to preserve the evidence. The letters were temporarily placed into the evidence locker until they could be scanned and permanently entered into evidence. I have nothing further at this time. I am respectfully requesting Letitia Leanne Stalk, date of birth 0804-1983, who is currently incarcerated at the El Paso County Jail, be charged with the following charges. Solicitation to commit escape. And then it's signed by the affiant Kelly Draper. So, T trying to hatch a plan to escape from jail. I don't quite know what planet she really lives in, to be honest. But um, that's just a fascinating insight again, isn't it? Into, into her mind and what kind of fantasy world she lives in. Just some other things, I'd, uh, I'm not sure if this was all clarified a little while ago, but it's just to do with her or Letitia's teaching license and what happened with her job. So I've discovered Letitia was going through orientation for a job at Mountain Ridge Middle School in Academy District 20 when her condition employment was rescinded. It was rescinded after finding inconsistencies in her employment application. T previously worked for Widefield School District in Southern El Paso County. She received her Colorado teaching license in March 2019 and was a substitute teacher in the district during the spring semester of 2019. She was then hired at French Elementary where she taught from August to November 2019 when she resigned. She was participating in three days of orientation at Mountain Ridge Middle School which is in the Briargate neighborhood of Colorado Springs when she was fired on January 24th, just three days before Gannon went missing. So was that just another thing which tipped T over the edge? Obviously we know she was very resentful of having to look after Gannon and you know, poor me, poor me, wasn't it? Poor me all the time. Maybe this, you know, 
being fired from her teaching job just three days in. Maybe that was just another thing which tipped her over the edge. Who knows? But um, I believe that Letitia is in court today. It's not for this charge. Um, she had a preliminary hearing was scheduled for, I believe it was for today and Monday, 8th of June. They were postponed. They still got today and Friday scheduled for a case, but they will be using these dates to have status hearings. Where I believe both defence and prosecution discuss, discuss the case. Uh, her defence did file a motion on May 18th to delay her upcoming hearings due to the COVID-19. The defence team stated that she was unable to meet with her defence due to the COVID-19 pandemic and restrictions at the Colorado Springs Criminal Justice Centre. And that the pandemic has prevented the defence from adequately preparing for this hearing. The defence claimed the jail allowed them to meet with Letitia through online videos for one to two hours at a time, approximately three to four days a week. Letitia's team said this was permitted from March 11th to May 4th. Then on May 4th, for reasons that were not made clear to the defence, the Criminal Justice Centre suddenly stopped allowing video visitations for professional visits to inmates. The defence also said the jail staff told them that the only way to speak with Letitia was to physically go to the jail and meet with her in an attorney room with glass in between counsel and Letitia. They said they have not been permitted to conduct a video visit with Letitia since April 30th. In a separate motion, the defence team asked for video access to their client. It referenced May 4th again, the day when a member of the defence tried to schedule a video, video, video visit with Letitia and the jail refused it because all inmates with her security designation were prohibited from the online visitation system. That's when the defence was told that they must visit Letitia in person. Letitia's defence team did not physically enter the jail because of concerns about COVID-19. So if we find out anything about the status hearings that they're having today and on Monday, we will let you know. I know none of it has been allowed to be recorded in any way, uh, but hopefully we will obviously hear the outcome of these hearings soon afterwards.